Well, I wanted to give you guys a little update on my Vespa project. So, here goes. I discovered this uh, amazing chemical called Evaporust. Evaporust was actually introduced to me by Bob Anderson when he restored my Philco radio chassis. He used it to de remove all the rust from the chassis and other various pieces without using any physical or um, abrasive substances like sandpaper or a wire wheel. Evaporust works by naturally dissolving iron oxide. I don't know how it works, but it does. Um, the cool thing about Evaporust is it can pretty much be dumped down the drain. As a matter of fact, that is what the instructions are for disposal. Dump it down the drain. You can all but use it as a as a mixer with your cocktail. I mean, the stuff is amazing. Um, no acids, no volatile organic, or volatile organic chemicals or fumes, and safe on skin and eyes, or moves rust to bare metal, and it actually works. It's a little, a little pricey, though. $22 a gallon is what I paid for this. So it does come in smaller quantities if you want to do smaller pieces, but I bought enough to do my all of my Vespa hardware and the fuel tank. How well does it work? Well, I have an example for you. Um, in about six hours, it took a spring that looked like this. Look at that. It looks nasty. And it turned it into this. Right down to bare metal. I put it back in again with a, with a fresh batch of solution, along with a few other pieces like this spring that I don't even know if... I don't even think this is part of my Vespa, but it could be used for something. Um, just to get any additional rust that I found off of it. I'm also doing little bits and pieces like bolts and nuts and screws, washers, all the little bits and pieces that were sitting in boxes um, that I have to sort through. And to give you an example of some parts that I've already done, these are the kickstand uh, nuts and bolts. And they're, they're now in a bag of uh, WD-40, just to prevent them from rusting again. But these, all of these bolts were coated with rust, and they were just almost indecipherable as to what they were. They were just packed and packed with rust. And you look at them now, and you can still see some paint residue that was on this bolt here. But, I mean, they all looked pretty damn terrible. My typical uh, method of cleaning would be with a wire wheel. Uh, but I don't have one in my condo, so I'm you know, trying to make do with what I've got. So, again, it went from this scaly, rusty mess. Now, this has been in there for about an hour, so it's, it was actually worse before. But after about an hour of soaking, it actually <laughs> doesn't look too bad um, compared to what it was. But it went from that to this. It looks brand new again, and that's what it should look like. And yeah, there's a little more rust on one side of the spring, so I put it back in for a couple more hours, and it's actually doing the job. But all these little bits and pieces that I was going to replace, I don't have to replace anymore, thanks to Evaporust. Anyway, it's not a commercial. I am not, and they are not paying me for this. I'm just using it. Oh yes, and here's the kicker. Here's the here's where it gets really cool. Evapor rust is reusable. All you've got to do is run it through a filter, maybe like a, a paper filter or something, and uh, run it through that filter to get all of the iron oxide that it took off of whatever you were doing, um, and any other contaminants, grease, or what have you. Filter that out, and you can use it again until it stops working. This container is full of uh, lug nuts. These are, uh, these are the original lug nuts for the wheels. There's eight of them. And I've got those soaking here. And I've got some bits and pieces, like this piece of chrome, chromed uh, metal. This is actually the electrical switch box. That's getting soaked. It's got a few bits and pieces. It's got some rust kind of poking through here and there. But I want to soak it and see if I can preserve it put a coat of wax on it so it doesn't rust over again. And like I said, when I put the stuff in these little bags, I'm soaking the parts um, 
with WD-40 just to protect it from further corrosion. Now these parts here, same deal. These were all completely rusted and they look brand new again. It's amazing. It's amazing how well it works. So there's hope for some of these parts. So in terms of how long you would soak these parts for, I would say about six or seven hours. Um, the, the bottle does say two to four hours, I believe. But um, letting them soak overnight isn't going to hurt anything. So let's move on to our next order of business. The, um, the wiring harness. Now, I'm aware I can buy a brand new harness for $35. But I'd rather not. I'd rather save that $35 and use it somewhere else. So, um, let's take a look at what we have, and even if we need a new harness. Okay, so let's, uh, let's take a look at this section here. Um, this is, it looks like the section of wiring that goes to the headlight assembly. And that would make sense because this section goes over to the switch block, and there should be a horn lead up. There it is. There's the horn connection right there. There's a little bit of um, chafing on the outer insulation, but no damage to the inside wires. I think sleeving it with a little bit of shrink tubing will solve that problem right quick. Moving down the wiring harness, everything looks to be still pretty flexible. No damage to the outer insulation. This, I believe, goes to the take a look at my diagram here. This is the schematic. Look at how simple it is. It's amazing. Uh, that is the rear brake pedal, I think. Um, yep, this should be a blue and a black wire. That's exactly what we have. So this is the rear brake light switch. And that's in pretty good shape. Nothing to really worry about there. Now here's where things get interesting. Down to the uh, junction box that mounts to the engine block, we have several cracks in the insulation. This insulation is so dried up that it cracks at will. That's a bad thing. That's something that we're going to have to replace. Try that again. Yeah. When that happens, it's time to time to fix it. Time to replace the outer insulation. As long as the inner wires are in good shape and not cracking and the insulation is not falling off, then I'd say that uh, a simple re-sleeve will take care of that. Before we do that, we want to make sure we write down where the wires go. Um, we don't really have to because it's really just a junction box. So I'm just going to write it down anyway just because. So I had uh, green, yellow, red, black, and blue. Green, yellow, red, black, and blue. So that looks pretty damn good. We're going to remove the uh, terminals. And we're going to remove the, uh, the sleeve if we can. Just unscrew them all. And we're going to put those in a separate bag. I think I'm going to call it, I don't know, terminal lugs, right? Wow, you can see how the Italians did this. This is pretty pretty amazing craftsmanship. They didn't use uh, fork connectors or eye loops or anything. What they actually did is they, they took the wire, they, they cut it long, and they formed their own rings, and then they soldered them. It's, uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty nice, nice work there. All right. So the trick is we've got to get this um, sleeve off the wire without ruining anything. And remember, if we screw it up, it's only a $35 wiring harness. So, If this were my Honda Elite, or I'm um, sorry, my Helix, uh, we'd be looking at a lot more than $35. Uh, a wiring harness for a Honda Helix, what does that cost? Um, I guess somewhere in the hundreds. <laughs> Seriously. Very, very expensive wiring harness on that bike. But in the 60s, electrical work was much simpler than it is today, you know? They didn't have as many toys and gadgets that they do now. All right. There we go. 
So that was easy. I got all that dried up, cracked up sleeve off. And we're just going to throw it away. It's more like a PVC pipe at this point, right? Next, we're going to grab some shrink tubing and we're going to re-sleeve it. So I got some shrink tubing all ready to go. We're going to pre-cut. Looks like we're going to have to cut it significantly. And let's see here. I'm thinking right about right about there ought to do it. Okay, so we'll just cut that down. Snip, snip. Okay, what do we got here? Uh, da, da, da. Yep, plenty of space. Okay, so now we're going to take the shrink tubing and we're going to spread it apart like this. And move it into a round shape and we're going to try to run these wires right through it. This way, we don't need to replace our authentic Italian wiring harness with a modern, low-quality example. I mean, we're going to use as much of the original scooter as we possibly can, and that includes wiring as well. Okay, now all we have to do is shrink it. I'm going to adjust the position of this tube to about where the old tubing left off. That way, any um, we don't have any additional exposure. A wiring and we don't have a lack of exposure. So I think I'm going to move it up just a little bit. That should do it. And then we're going to grab the heat gun and we're going to shrink it down. All right. I haven't used this one in a little while. It's uh, bought this at Harbor Freight. It was a cheapo. I paid like 20 bucks for this thing. Looks pretty well. So we've successfully repaired the section that goes right to the motor. Look at that. That is absolutely better than spending $35 on a wiring harness from unknown origins. I like that. I like that solution a lot. We're going to do the exact same thing to the headlamp. Uh, section. We're going to just pull off what they originally installed and we're going to replace it with um, some new heat shrink. 
this should be pretty easy. Just a couple of bullet connectors. But fitting those through is going to be a challenge. Uh, so what I might do is split it with a, um, a razor blade. And we're just going to pull it right off. I could actually just sleeve over this on the damaged area, but I think I'm going to go all the way right here. This is, this is just a short section. There's no reason not to just replace it. Okay. We're using half inch, by the way. This is half inch uh, shrink tubing. Good. And if we had to, we could just go through the entire wiring harness if we had, I mean, if it was necessary. Um, I don't see the need to do that at this point in time. So I'm not going to bother. You'll notice there really isn't much to this wiring harness. Now here's why. This scooter does not feature directionals. It does not feature a fuel gauge. There is no electric choke. There is no, um, you know, what else doesn't it have <laughs> that a modern bike does? It does have a high and low beam. It has a tail light and brake light switches. That's about it. Um, it's just, oh yeah, no gauges of any kind. No temperature gauge, no directional uh, gauge, nothing. Nothing. It's just transportation. And it's basic, most basic form. So the two damaged sections of my wiring harness are now repaired. Ain't it great? And I didn't have to spend a dime using stuff I already had on hand. Now what has to happen is these need to be um, taped up. Um, because originally there was some electrical tape on each uh, union that has to now be replaced. So I'll be wrapping these with, uh, with tape. And uh, we'll call that a done. I probably could have done a better job, but uh, <laughs> it works. So I sealed up uh, every every junction so that water can't get into the loom. That's pretty much what that's all about, and to protect the wire from grazing against metal. So, <clears throat> yeah, I got all that taken care of. Um, and, uh, yeah. So where are we in terms of costs so far? It's actually pretty easy to figure out. So I went down to a body shop to have the estimate done on all the body work I'm going to need. And the biggest problem I have on this uh, particular body is this giant gash dent right here. <clears throat> now fixing this is going to present a challenge to any body professional. Which is why the cost is going to be approximately $300 just for this dent alone. And that includes um, basically sanding the area, pulling the dent out, using a, um, a welded pin dent pulling system. Um, in addition to a little bit of finessing with the um, hammer and dolly method from the inside. It's a lot of work, and it takes a lot of skill to get it done right. But once it's out, it still has to be mudded and sanded and then paint it. So $300 for the dent, I actually had the body shop give me a quote, and I actually went out seeking a body shop that specialized, or that's been in business for a long time. 
I was looking for someone who actually is sort of like an owner-operator. Someone who has hands-on experience working with auto body work. <clears throat> so I found one of those old divey type uh, auto shops. And I spoke to the owner, who's also the guy who's going to do the work. <laughs> so I prefer dealing with people like that rather than bringing it to a to a faceless corporate body shop um, where someone, some perky uh, insurance claim adjuster <laughs> comes out or someone who works in that business and says, oh, gee, gosh, we'll fix it up right quick. You know, um, I want to talk to someone who's going to do the work. And if that happens to be a perky former insurance adjuster type, then, then great. But in this case, I'm dealing with someone who fixes hot rods for a living. So um, that having been said, I had him do an estimate using the exact same color. Um, he suggested I bring it to a, a local paint shop um, before I have it sandblasted. And they can actually check. There's, there's one good patch of paint right where the taillight was that they're going to get their color off of. It doesn't it hasn't been exposed to UV rays, and it hasn't been, you know, it's never been washed or polished or waxed or anything. So this is going to be what the original color was. And um, if I had better lighting in this room, I'd be able to give you a, a better look. But you know what I can do? I'm going to just rotate it on my table. This is what the color was. Now, it doesn't look very good on camera, but I assure you it's really quite beautiful. So you can, oops. So you can actually see the shade of red it was. It looks darker in person than it does on my camera screen. So, And that original paint has a lot of cracks in it, so <laughs> you know it needs a paint job. There's there's no there's no two ways about it. Um, it has to be done. So what did he quote me for the paint and the dent removal? He quoted me approximately. Now this is <laughs> where it gets interesting. He said anywhere between five hundred and fifteen hundred, um, which you know I know is a bullshit uh, answer, but that's about what I expected to hear. He says if he has to, you know, do anything crazy, like if he finds more dents, then obviously that is included. 1500 would be the top, 500 would be, now that's just paint, by the way, so $500 would be, you know, about as low as it gets. So, and that's including paint. Now, someone who has actually done Vespas before uh, would have a much cleaner, a clearer estimate. If it wasn't for that wild card of a dent that I've got going on, uh, it would be a pretty straightforward job. But because of that dent, the price changes dramatically. Um, I also have a few other dents. I've got a little bit of welding, too. I mean, I've got this crack in the body. I'm going to see if he can do that. I've got one down there, too. Um, it seems like a lot of these end up cracking somewhere around here. And I estimate that because... I assume that's because the uh, Kickstarter is over here, and maybe they're hitting it with their foot. I don't know. But a lot of them have cracks right in this section area. Section area. That doesn't make any sense. Right in this section. You know what I'm trying to say. But all that having been said, um, I have to bring it to him already sandblasted. Because he doesn't do sandblasting. So I have to pay about $125 I found a shop that does classic auto body sandblasting. They specialize in classic cars. Um, so, you know, so they use a softer media, and you know they're not going to rush the job. They realize that it's obviously being done, you know, <clears throat> as a collector's item rather than as a uh, as a Camry, you know, um, or a daily driver. So they're going to do a, a very nice job. They have excellent testimonials. Uh, same with the auto body shop. I've heard good things about them. So I have, uh, let's say, I've, ha I've heard nothing bad so far. But um, everything on the body is good. There's no rust. I mean, there's a little bit of surface rust underneath, but there's no rot. Usually by the time these are you know, ready for restoration, uh, they're pretty badly rotted, especially in New England. Uh, where a lot of people tend to ride their bikes late into the season and they pull them out early when there's still salt in the roads. 
so a New England bike or scooter is going to have a lot of salt damage. Um, this one doesn't have any of that. It's actually a, a pretty well cared for machine. Um, with the exception of the time it's spent in storage and pieces, um, it's had a pretty good life. Uh, so we're going to try to extend that. Now this black right here, this is not original. Uh, this, I, I think I determined earlier on, was something that someone had added to it as a, as a customization. I don't intend to preserve that. Um, it's going to be all red. There will be no black. I, I believe this was done to hide some collision damage many years ago. Yeah, there's a lot of dents on this panel. There, you know, I'm, I've gone back and forth on this, but I could replace this panel for about $105. Um, I found a company that actually sells the patch panel that can be used to go over this. You basically cut this out and put in a new piece and you're done. I'm considering that, uh, but I want to see how this... I'm, I'm going to pay to have the dent removed first. If I don't like it, then I'm not going to... You know, If it doesn't look good to me, then what I'll do is I'll, I'll end up uh, doing like a patch job. But... He did, he did say that this is, <laughs> this is not going to be an easy one because, unfortunately, it also includes some body lines. And to replicate those body lines would be nearly impossible uh, without using Bondo, of course. And you can see on this side, that body line goes over and it's part of the door, actually. The door, 78 bucks found it. Uh, 78 bucks. This is a very special door. It was used for the first 16,000 um, units. So that's from 1963 to 64. And after 64, after serial number 19,000 something, they changed the design. And then they, I believe they changed it yet again uh, to an even bigger door. So there's like three different doors on this, on this body. But I have the rarest of them all, so <laughs> yay me. Um, just for the record, my chassis number is 16,883. So it's one of the earlier ones uh, for the 64 model year. So. so we're looking at around, let's just say 1,500 bucks in body work, which is pretty good. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a hefty amount, but it's also labor intensive, uh, more so than your average bear. Um, so it's going to be a lot of money. Now I priced out all the mechanical parts, um, and I'll just go. I'll just run the order down. Actually, why don't I show you what I'm?